Hello wonderful human beings, Sheldon Evans here and in today's video I'll be showing you how you can create your own LUTs in Photoshop to use on your photos and videos and get some of that color grading goodness. So let's jump right into it. Alrighty, wonderful human being. So we're in Photoshop now, as you can see, and we're gonna use this photo of Cynthia to color grade it and then create a color preset or a color LUT from it, which we can then apply to our other photos and videos if we want and get the same color grade across all of our images and all of our videos. So to start off with, we're gonna create a new layer using Photoshop's built-in color grading tools. Now there's a couple tools that Photoshop has. So if you click this little button here, it'll pop up with the options that you can select. So you can use U saturation and change the U and the saturation of the colors in your photo. You can use color balance, you can use gradient map, which I don't actually like that much. And you can use selective color or even photo filter. So if we pop on photo filter, you'll see it applies a color over the entire image and you can adjust it up here, how intense you'd like it. But we're not gonna do that, we're gonna delete that layer and we're going to start off with color balance. Now what color balance does is it allows you to add colors, certain colors, your cyans, yellows, magentas and greens to your midtones, highlights and shadows. So we're going to start off with the midtones and I want this to be a little bit warmer. So I want this photo to be a little bit warmer. To, so to do that I'm going to add some red and some yellow to it. So you can see that it's got a little bit warmer overall. So I've added some red and some yellow to the, the midtones of the image. And if you click this little button here, it'll show you the before and after. So you can see it's slightly warmer. It's very, very minimal for now, which is fine because we're just starting off. So let's go over to the shadows. Now I want the shadows to be a little bit warmer as well. So to do that, you're gonna add some yellow to the shadows. Now, obviously if you slide this all the way, it's gonna be very intense. So these adjustments are very minimal. I'm gonna add about six points. Let's say six points of yellow to the shadows and maybe one point of red. Okay, that looks that looks good. So it's warmer as you can see. Now let's move on to our highlights and we're gonna add some blue to our highlights. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of cyan and a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit because we don't want the image to get cool again. And that looks good. I like the way that it's looking so far. Now I want to change the color of this blue. I don't like this blue of the sky. I think it's a bit too blue. So I want to change it and make it a little bit teal. And as you guys know, that orange and teal look is incredibly popular online. So we're going to sort of go with something similar to that for this photo. So we're going to click our little button again and we're going to use a hue saturation layer. Now with the hue saturation layer, it's going to pop up in your properties box over here. I'm going to change the color of the blues. So you're going to click this little button and click on blues. Now when you change this hue slider, you'll see it'll change the hue of the blue color. That's exactly what we want. Now obviously you can go over Mad Max sort of style and go red skies, or we can go this way and give our skies a little bit of a, a teal color. Now I really like the way that looks, but I think it's a bit too high. So I'm going to drop the saturation just slightly and the lightness slider will basically adjust how bright or how dark that color is. So I'm gonna bring it just a little bit down because I just want it a little bit darker. That looks great. Now, and finally, I'm going to use a selective color layer and again on the blue channel. And with selective color, you can again change the color of a specific color in your photo. And I'm gonna do that with the blue again. Now you could just use a U saturation layer, but I'm gonna do this just to give it a little bit more of a cyan color. So we can do that by bringing the yellow up and then just make it a little bit darker again. So you can see, there we are, that looks great. So now you can see what we've done with these three layers here. That was our original image and that's the final. I think it's a bit too bright. So I'm gonna add an additional brightness and contrast layer. I'm gonna bring down the brightness slightly and also bring down the contrast just slightly. I want the image to be a little bit more flat. And now the image is looking great. I'm liking the way the color is looking at the moment, but maybe I want to add a bit of a fade and give it a bit of a vintage look. So click on this and add a curves adjustment layer. Now what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to adjust the curves of this photo. Now you can bring this down or you can bring it up. It depends on what you want to do, but I'm going to just boost this level slightly, which is going to add a bit of a fade to the shadows. We just drop the contrast slightly. So to add more contrast in, you're just gonna bring that down and bring that up and add a bit of an S curve 
to your photo and that looks good it looks like it's bumped up the saturation slightly as well so we can go back to our hue saturation slider and make sure that it's on master which is going to select all of the colors and I'm going to drop the saturation just slightly now that looks good now what you can do is you can select all of your layers so you can hold shift and click and then press command or control and G and that will group all of your color layers together so you can rename this to color now when you preview this you're going to see the change that it's made to your photo now I really like the way this is looking so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to save this as a LUT that you can then apply to your other photos and your video if you'd like to as well. But before I do that, I just want to take a second to thank Skillshare, who is today's sponsor. Now, if you haven't heard about Skillshare, they're an online platform with over 19,000 courses, covering everything from photography to video production to music to even marketing and business. Whatever it may be, they've got something for you. So if you're thinking that you're in the creative space, you're a photographer and you know what you're doing, maybe you want to book more gigs, maybe you want to get more clients, they've got courses from greats like Gary Vaynerchuk covering marketing and social media strategies. They've got courses on Facebook ads. So if you want to sign up, there is a link in the description of today's video for the first 150 people who will get two months of Skillshare for free. So make sure that you sign up quickly because those spots are going to disappear. But more on that later, let's get back to the video and I'll show you how to apply lights to your other photos. Okay, so to do that, you're going to go over to File, Export, and Color Lookup Tables. And we're going to export this as a LUT. So once you click that, you're going to change whatever you want to name it up here. Use lowercase file extensions and grid points 64. So set this to 64. I think the default is probably around 32. Just set it to high. 64 is more than enough. You don't have to go to maximum. And then for file format, this is basically the format of the LUT that you're going to save. So just save it, save it as a cube file. You can uncheck these. Cube is basically the standard that everyone will be able to use. You'll be able to use this in Adobe Premiere, in Final Cut Pro, in Photoshop, and wherever else LUTs are used, you can use this file. So go ahead and click OK, and then you're going to name it. Now name it whatever you'd like to name it. Let's name it Bluey. That sounds good. And save it to where you'd be able to to access it pretty easily. So I'm just going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to hit save. Now that LUT is saved. Now how do we apply that color LUT to our photos or our video? So I'm going to hide our color layer and I'm going to click this adjustment layer button again and click color lookup. Now that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to apply the LUT layer that we've just saved. So you click up here, click load 3D LUT and then navigate to where you just saved your LUT. So I saved it as bluey.cube, click open and our LUT is applied. And you can see that this just the single layer now has our color grade on it. Now you can open up a different photo, which I'll do here and add a color lookup layer to it. You can browse for the LUT that you just created bluey open and you can see it applies our LUT to this photo this is the LUT we just created now your LUT will affect different photos in different ways obviously because each photo that you take has a different color palette in it so whatever the base color palette is it's going to convert it based on the values that are saved in the original LUT file file so you can change this slightly if you'd like you can change the opacity by sliding left and right here to determine the intensity of your LUT or you can save your LUT and then maybe make a few extra adjustments like add a brightness or a contrast layer maybe you want to boost the brightness up maybe you want to add a little bit more contrast and it's up to you how you'd like to grade your images now you can also use other LUTs we can use some of the LUTs from my hello wonderful LUT pack so I'll show you how to do that you can click this click color lookup so we can delete these two layers and browse and now we can select one of the LUTs from the hello wonderful LUT pack so let's go ahead with Geo, and you'll see it applies the LUT to this photo. Now these LUTs obviously that I've created are incredibly intense and the reason they're intense is that you don't have to use them at 100%. So they are maximum at 100% but they're not meant to be applied at 100% all the time. So let's drop it down to around 60% and I like the way that looks on this photo. Let's check out another photo. Let's create another adjustment color lookup layer. We can select load a lot and let's try what would look good punch so you'll see this is quite intense and very red so we can drop the opacity slightly and you can see that it's added some red to the shadows some blue to the to the overall you can see some vignetting here which can be edited in camera raw so i'll show you how to do that as well quickly why not an extra tip so go to filter 
camera raw filter, uh, lens corrections, and you can drop that. There we go. And we've removed that vignetting. And we've got our color lookup layer attached. Let's try another photo. You can even do it on landscapes, obviously. Let's do this color lookup layer. Let's browse for our lit. Uh, let's try what would look good on this forest walk, considering it's a forest. That looks good. We can drop the opacity slightly. You can see what this light has done before and after. Finally, let's try one more image, add a color lookup layer, and we can use the that wonderful light, which is the wonderful light, the one that everybody wants, which is intensive 100%, obviously, so we're gonna drop it down. 50% looks amazing. And there you go, your color grid is done in one single adjustment. That's it guys, I really hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, smash that subscribe button if you are new here and you wanna see more tutorials like this. And as always, I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.